all I want to share with you is, it is as though Allah is saying this, this rope directly connects to Allah. And you better hold on to it for protection. And if you do, you will be directly connected to Allah. And that rope of Allah, as the Prophet would describe it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the Qur'an itself. So, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All together. In other words, us coming closer to the Qur'an is a collective affair. We have to do this together. I have to help you get closer to the Qur'an. You have to get me, help me get closer to the Qur'an. This is something we all need each other for. It's not an individual exercise. Then all, on top of that, jami'an. In other words, don't take one part of the Qur'an and ignore other parts of the Qur'an. You should be on a quest to try to understand and internalize as much of the Qur'an as you can. And when something of the Qur'an comes to you that you didn't know before, you should joyously come in, you know, and you should receive it. Obviously, it's going to be a long journey before you and I entirely understand the whole Qur'an, you know, and take what I've given you and be grateful. You're asking for more than I've given you. I've given you more than anybody else. Now imagine this, you know, uh, applied on us. Allah has given us Qur'an. Allah has given us Qur'an. And some people say, well, I'm not sure if the Qur'an is enough for me to really develop my faith. I need something more. And I remind you of the words that Allah reminded Musa alayhi salam of, خُذْ مَا أَتَيْتُكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Grab what I've given you and be grateful. Take a hold of what I've given you. I argue for people who are looking for something more, my argument is they actually haven't grabbed onto the Qur'an yet. Because if you did, if you experienced this book, if you really engage this book, you would know there's nothing more to ask for. SubhanAllah. This is it. This is, oh, how can I ask for more? Then Allah's word, which is why in another place in the Quran, Allah says, "Awalam yakfihim anna anzalna alayka al-kitaba yutla alayhim." Isn't it enough for them that we sent a book down onto them, that it's being read onto them? Isn't it in, like Allah put it in this way? Isn't it enough for them? All I want to share with you is, it is as though Allah is saying this, this rope directly connects to Allah. And you better hold on to it for protection. And if you do, you will be directly connected to Allah. And that rope of Allah, as the Prophet would describe it, sallallahu alayhi wa is the Qur'an itself. So, وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا All together. In other words, us coming closer to the Qur'an is a collective affair. We have to do this together. I have to help you get closer to the Qur'an. You have to get me, help me get closer to the Qur'an. This is something we all need each other for. It's not an individual exercise. Then all, on top of that, jami'an. In other words, don't take one part of the Qur'an and ignore other parts of the Qur'an. You should be on a quest to try to understand and internalize as much of the Qur'an as you can. And when something of the Qur'an comes to you that you didn't know before, you should joyously come in, you know, and you should receive it. Obviously, it's going to be a long journey before you and I entirely understand the whole Qur'an, you know, and take what I've given you and be grateful. You're asking for more than I've given you. I've given you more than anybody else. Now imagine this, you know, uh, applied on us. Allah has given us Qur'an. Allah has given us Qur'an. And some people say, well, I'm not sure if the Qur'an is enough for me to really develop my faith. I need something more. And I remind you of the words that Allah reminded Musa alayhi salam of, خُذْ مَا أَتَيْتُكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Grab what I've given you and be grateful. Take a hold of what I've given you. I argue for people who are looking for something more, my argument is they actually haven't grabbed onto the Qur'an yet. If you did, if you experienced this book, if you really engage this book, you would know there's nothing more to ask for. SubhanAllah. This is it. This is, oh, how can I ask for more? Then Allah's word. Which is why in another place in the Qur'an, Allah says, أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِهِمْ أَنَّا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ يُطْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ Isn't it enough for them that we sent a book down onto them, that it's being read onto them? Isn't it, in, like Allah put it in this way, isn't it enough for them? Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, salam nur nur. Uh, peace be upon you, Abdul Samad. Uh, salam, uh, Adam Tahir. 
Uh, Tony Mulder, yes. Um, peace be upon you, brother. Uh, sorry for this late coming. I had to fix up the the network, and as usual, I don't know why this is happening, but I guess I have to change the network. I have to like get a new network provider. I think that that will be help, helpful and beneficial. Uh, yeah <clears throat> so thank you all for coming uh that was i seek refuge with allah against the accursed devil woman ahsana kawlan min man da'a ila allahi wa amila salihan wa qala inna li min al-muslimin and who is better in speech than one who invites to allah and act righteous and says indeed i am of the muslims submitters Hazi sabili adu ila ala basiratin ana wa mani tabani wa subhana allahi wa ma ana min al mushrikin. This is my way I invite to Allah by perception. I and whoever follows me in glory be to Allah, for I am not among the mushriks, that is the idolaters. Allah hakkum min rabbikum fa man sha'a fal yu'min wa man sha'a fal yakfur. The truth is from your Lord, so whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Ya ayuwa allazina amanu taqu Allah wa kunu ma aswadikin. O you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are honest, who are truthful. So, thank you all for coming once again. Uh, as you all know, today's topic we are going to discuss about if it is not from God, then it is not. If it is not from God, then it is not part of Islam. That is Al Islam, the submission. If it is not from God, then it is not part of Al Islam, right? It is not from God. So, Anything you are doing in your deen, make sure it comes from God. If it doesn't come from God, then it is not part of Islam, right? Now, <clears throat> uh, let me see. Yes, yeah, Natalia, I see you. Peace be upon you. Uh, Fatima Chin, peace be upon you. Thank you. For him. Yeah, salam, Sharif Karim. <clears throat> uh huh. Uh, just a minute, let me elect, elect somebody that I'm online. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Salam. Uh huh. So let's 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 start with the topic. So first of all, I'll take you to Quran chapter forty-three, uh, verse seventy-eight. Quran chapter forty-three, verse seventy-eight, where God says, "Lakad jina kum bil haq, walakin na akthar kum lil haq al karuhul." He says, "We have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth." Right, we have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth, meaning God and his angels, his messengers together. We have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. So now we have to base the emphasis on the truth so that we get to know what all this is about. Why is it that uh, the correctional officer you might think is offensive to other group? Why do you think he's castigating or rebuking other people? uh why do you think he's getting on the necks of other people these are all misconceptions that people will have concerning the truth right so if we don't understand the notion of what the truth is it becomes difficult to get you know the message across so we need to understand what the truth is what is the truth and what the truth is and when we say the truth
yeah when we say the truth is is a fact that that can be verified or that has been verified something something you say which can be verified that people can ascertain and know that what you're saying is the truth that is the truth right aha uh -huh. so if you say something and it cannot be verified then that cannot be the truth you know at that time it can be an assumption the truth is something that you can investigate to see for yourself for, for instance if somebody says uh baba shwaib has two kids and then you go and verify and you find out that yes it's true he has two kids that becomes the truth at that given time right is the truth uh-huh the reason why i use the word at that given time may it be in future he might decide to have three kids four kids so if it is later on you come and verify and you see he has four kids then you know the truth which was truth maybe years ago is no more truth in that but as it stands with god is the absolute truth when we are dealing with god we are dealing with the absolute truth there is no doubt in in the aspect of god right yeah greetings uh skeptic jabani you're welcome uh musa shaib salam salam alaikum yeah Uh, Najib Tahir, keep bleeding, okay? Mm -hmm. You can go and burn the sea, okay? Uh huh. <laughs> hey, Mushirikai, come for street. <laughs> okay. So that leads us to the truth. So when I when we say the truth, something which conforms to reality, something which can be fact checked, something which can be verified, just to be ascertained. That is the truth, right? So God says in Quran chapter 43, verse 78, we have brought you the truth, but most of you hate the truth. So this is where we have to understand what, what, is, the, uh, what is the essence of bringing to the people what is the truth, because most of the people are liars. Huh? Most of the people, they are liars. They like to fabricate things. They like to tell you things that cannot be verified. And whenever somebody tells you something which cannot be verified, it becomes falsehood. It doesn't become the truth anymore. It's either classified as assumption or falsehood, right? Assumption, right? Sometimes we can assume some things and it can become true later on, yes. But whenever somebody cannot give you the chance to verify their claims, that cannot be held in high esteem and to, to, to go to the extent of saying that is the truth. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So this is why I'm standing on my grounds and I said the scholars, if they're up to the task, they should come out, let's sit down. Let's do a dialogue. I don't, I'm not in, in need of a debate. A debate needs a mediator, I need a referee. And the referee is usually they take sides. I need a dialogue, you come face to face. You prove your claims, it's simple as it is, A, B, C, D. You understand? Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 43, verse 78, let's start with, do I share? the screen and see what the best right mm -hmm. that is surah to zikharov then we go to verse 17. yeah so he says lakad jinaakum bil haqq walakinna aktharakum lil haqq la karihun he says we have brought you the truth you can see the truth right the truth that is any fact that can be verified or that has been verified. That is the truth, right? Something which conforms to reality is, is real. It's not like you're being lied to or you, it, it, an assumption. No. So the truth. So we have brought you the truth, but most of you, God is, the Quran was sent down to mankind as guidance, right? Quran chapter 2 verse 185. So then God is talking to mankind. He says, but most of you, you, human beings, and the genes right most of you hate the truth or you are averse to the truth people hate reality they hate factual informations when you give them fact they hate it they prefer to assume oh my scholar says my sheikh says my this says my dad says you understand they prefer that instance right so listen carefully what zakir naik has to say concerning this issue not me. <laughs> Maybe people think I'm just an ordinary guy. Well, I'm just Baba Shwaib. I'm just the correctional officer, the young guy. 
So you might not take me serious. So listen to your own Any uh, person, scholar. any scholar, listen. sister, says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 111, قُلْ حَاتُوا بُنَانَكُمْ Produce your proof, إِنْكُمْ تُمْ صَادِقِنْ But it was truthful. Any scholar, therefore what I say, that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says, carry weight. You see, let's play one, person, one more. Any scholar, sister, says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 111, قُلْ حَاتُوا بُنَانَكُمْ Produce your proof, إِنْكُمْ تُمْ صَادِقِنْ But it was truthful. Any scholar, therefore what I say that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says carry weight. As A, B, C, D. You see, any scholar says anything, ask for proof. Why do we ask for proof? We ask for proof to substantiate the claim in order to give the veracity to the claim. You understand? So, you ask for proof is not because you are arguing. You ask for proof in order to go and verify and check for yourself. Remember, Quran chapter 17, verse 36. God says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. So most of the sectarians, they are like sheep, right? Like sheep. Like, meh, meh, yeah, sheep. <laughs> they don't verify. They don't know what they are following. They only blind follow their scholars because they see them as authoritative. And they are like, oh, mashallah, my scholar says this is haram, so it's haram. Oh, look at him, he's wearing a necklace, it is haram. The fool will not ask his scholar for a proof to go and verify whether it's the truth or not. Because the scholar has dressed nicely, he thinks the scholar is saying the truth. But because I'm smarter than that damn ass fools, I decided to check. Quran chapter 35 verse 12. It gives me the chance to wear the necklace and thank God for it. Because it's coming from God. Right? Where will we get the chance to make the beads and the jewelries and all the things we are wearing? It's from God. Quran chapter 7 verse 32. He gives you the chance to wear as an adornment. A fool who doesn't verify what his scholar tells him will now come and watch the video and say, look, look, this guy is a satanic guy. He's wearing a necklace. You ask him where? Does he say it's haram? He's looking at you. But but in Islam, it's haram. My sheikh says that. Your sheikh? The last time I checked, your sheikh is a nobody <laughs> in the deen. He doesn't have any share <laughs> or uh, investment in the deen. Aha, uh -huh. your sheikh is an imposter. It's a mushrik. So he should go and be proud of his mushrik sect. That's where your sheikh belongs. This is your, one of your top scholars, Zakir Naik. Any scholar sees anything, ask for proof. And then he tells you, he's Zakir Naik, what he says in Islam is what? Zero. What God says, carry it. And it is not as if I'm giving credence to Zakir Naik. I'm rather giving credence to the statement he makes. This, the credence I'm giving is the words of God, which is the ultimate, which is the supreme, absolute truth. You don't need to rely on man-made opinion or man-made doctrine to pass on the truth. It doesn't exist that way. Aha, uh -huh. greetings, Daniel, Daniel. You, do you get my point? Uh -huh. So let's go to the point I'm making. So Quran chapter 43 verse 78 classifies this information by telling us God has brought us the truth, but most of us hate the truth. So when people hate the truth, they don't want to listen to it. When people hate the truth, they want to conceal it. They want to hide it. When people hate the truth, they hate the one who tells the truth. So this is why Prophet Muhammad himself, as a messenger, his people denied, rejected the truth. Quran chapter 6, verse 66. Huh? His people rejected the truth while it is the truth. They rejected it. Aha. Uh -huh. Quran chapter 6, verse 66. Right? The people of Prophet Muhammad, most of them, they rejected the truth when he brought it. Because they hate it. Because what you are going to say is contrary to what they have been practicing. Right? They are just like sheep. Huh? They are just following their Abba Anna. They are they are they are fathers. So they don't want you to tell them the truth because it will damage the illusion of their beliefs. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. Greetings, Gabon Boya. You're welcome. 
Uh huh. Exactly, Razaka Atiti. Yes, you're right. Just forget the distractors, people who are just there not to benefit. Just ignore them, right? Uh huh. So we move on. So when you go to Quran chapter 18, verse 29, the first part of the verse it says, Al Hakum Rabbikum, Famansha Fali Yumi, Wamansha Fali Yafu. It says, The truth is from your Lord. So whoever wills, let him believe, and whoever wills, let him disbelieve. Who is forcing you? Baba Shraib sat here, he's using the Quran to lecture wise people and intelligent people. If you are a fool or you are emotional and you come to meet my lectures and you don't like what I say, is it by force? You can just take a map and take a car and drive to hell. You understand? Or use a navigator and a car and drive to hell. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sitting here. I open the Quran. I'm telling people the truth. They want to listen, that's up to them. They don't want to listen, that's up to them. What is your share in the hatred you are having for me? <laughs> Do you understand my point? It is the God's words I'm giving to you. It's not as if I came to sit here and I say, hey, according to this sheikh, if you do this, you do that, you go to heaven. If you don't do that, you go to hell. I came, the same book you, the Mushri, claim you believe in. I took the same book and I'm telling you what God says. And you say, no, it is wrong. I don't have the right to say that truth the book is saying. But who gives you the right to say the gibberish your scholars are saying? You get my point. Salam, Isa Watson. You're welcome, brother. Uh, Rock Silver. Uh, Mushfiku Sheikh. You're welcome. Salam. You, do you get my point? Uh-huh. So, if, if, like I keep repeating myself, if you are emotional and the, the little, little choice of words I use and you think it's an abusive and it's an insult, it means you are guilty. Uh, because if somebody is a criminal and I call him a criminal, he commits crimes and I call him a criminal and you say that's an insult, then it means you lack understanding. If somebody steals and I call him a thief and you say I'm insulting or I'm using abusive words, then it means you lack understanding. If somebody rapes women or kids and then I call him a rapist and you say I'm insulting, it means you are a fool. If you are acting foolish and I call you stupid, or a fool where is the insult there because remember you act as stupid do you see how it works so where is the insult so are you saying when somebody's a, is a thief we shouldn't call him a thief anymore when somebody's a mushrik we shouldn't call them mushrik anymore then what is the world we are creating for ourselves so why is it that if somebody's a muslim you have the right to call him a muslim how come if it's a mushrik you can't call him a mushrik Guys, I hope you're following the logic I'm giving you here. It's as simple as it is. You claim you are Ali Sunni or you are a Sunni follower. And I call you a Mushrik because Sunnah, your prophet never followed Ali Sunnah. He never followed Ali Sunnah wal Jamaah. You say you are following Tariqa to Tijaniya. Your prophet has no idea what sect is that. So you have attached that sect to Islam of God. And I call you a mushrik because a mushrik is somebody who associates something with something that he doesn't have authority. Simple. Hmm? Abdul Jalil, yes, you are right. If the truth offends them, let them let it offend them. Zamzam, salam. Uh, thank you, uh, Daniel Daniel. <laughs> let the mushriks know the truth. Thank you. <laughs> let them. Uh, Abu Ladi Abu. Yeah, salam. Uh, okay, so let, let's move on, right? Mm -hmm. So, Quran chapter 18, verse 29 gives you the chance if you want to believe, if you want to believe. Now, remember, when we say believe, let me let me break this down. When we say believe, I can believe Lionel Messi is the best player in the world, but I might not be his follower. Do you see how it works? And if I believe he's the best, how does he affect anybody's life? I don't understand. Okay, I believe the Quran is enough for guidance. You say you don't believe, and I'm speaking in your head. How? <laughs> Do you see how belief works? Belief is, is like, a, is like a, a, a presumption that you have held to be true, right? But even though it can be verified, so you believe, you have put your trust in it. 
Now, mind you, before you put your trust in somebody, it means you have cross-checked, you have verified who they are before you put your trust in somebody. So let's say you are going to give your money to somebody to keep it for you. And you have never tested the person to hold your money for you. You have never tested the person's capability or credibility. Do you think you can put your trust or believe that person? The answer is no. So which means when you have to believe something, you have to have the notion of verifying what you believe before putting in your faith there. So this is why we put our belief in the Quran because I have verified it. And that's why I put my belief there. Do you see how it works? So if I say I believe in God, because I verify everything that God is telling me. That's why I put my belief there. Simple. Do you get my point? Mm -hmm. So believing is a choice. If you want, believe. If you don't want, don't believe. That is it. That's how it works. Quran chapter 18, verse 29. So Quran chapter 23, verse 9. He says, Bal wa innahum la kazibur. In fact, we have brought them the truth, but then they are what? In but they are liars. Uh, they are liars. They are deceivers. Who are they? The mushriks. You understand? They are the liars. Because whatever they are giving you is not the truth. And when we say the truth is any factual information that can be verified. Right? Uh -huh. It can be verified. Factual. And I, that's why I use the word factual. It's not as if any information that can be verified. No. The truth is any factual information that can be uh, verified. And then when we say, uh, when we bring that notion of uh, factual, we are talking about something which, which has to do with uh, a piece of information about circumstance that exists or events that have occurred. Do you see something which has actually come into being in reality? That is what we call factual. Yeah, thank you very much, Nikki Kemper. Salam, you're welcome. Yes, and that is how I want people to be motivated. How, that's how I want people to follow the truth. Because it's no more my own words. It's the words of God I'm giving you to you just in a different language. Simple. And I give you the capability and chance to verify. You don't agree with me, that's up to your choice. It's up to you. I don't force you to come and follow me or be my servant or be, you understand, under me. No. I just want us to learn together. Then you can be a learned person and I can be a learned person. Then we have peace in our lives instead of letting some foolish people control us and they think they have authority. That's all I want us to understand. Give you the freedom to liberate yourselves from mental slavery. We have been enslaved, not just because of politics, religion, religion, uh, anything, football, entertainment. We are enslaved in every aspect of life. So yours is just to liberate yourself by knowing every factual information around you so that you will not be lied to, as simple as it is. So Quran chapter 23, verse 90, God says, we have brought them the truth, but most of them are liars, right? Huh? They are liars. Because the truth comes from God. That can be verified in a book. And you said, no, it's not enough. You understand? It's not enough. You need another book. And that is a problem. You see? So we, we move on. So when I take you to Quran chapter 6, verse 73, God mentioned a, word, a statement in that verse. Quran chapter 6, verse 73. He says, his speech, his word is the truth. Huh? His statement, his speech, his word is the truth. That's what God says. He didn't say Muhammad's word. He didn't say anybody's word. He didn't say any other entity's word is the truth. He says his word is the truth. Quran chapter 6 verse 73. In the middle of the verse, he mentioned that. Waqawluhul so the word of God, the speech of God, the statement of God is the truth. But apart from that, there is something interesting I want you to see. I'm going to take you to Quran chapter 10 verse 2. Quran chapter 10 verse 2. Right? 
And let me share the screen. I want us to analyze something. Yes, yeah, salam, Muslim Jeff. You're welcome. I want us to analyze something. So I take you to Quran chapter 10, verse 32. See what God says. God says, فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ He says, so therefore, that is God, your Lord, the truth. رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقِّ Then now God is asking a question. فَمَاذَا بَادَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا دَلَالِ so what is there after the truth except error or if not error? What is there? What, what else do you have after the truth? Because if I ask you one plus one, the answer is two. So if I say two, do I need to say 2.1 or 2.3 or 2 point something? No. Or two raised to the power one, two? No. If the answer is two, stay there. Simple. Put full stop. Bang. Nothing else to be added. You understand? So what is there after the truth, if not error, except error? What is there? So after the truth, you have nothing else. So ask every mushrik out there, what is the truth in Islam? Is it the Quran? They will say the Quran is the truth, but you see how foolish they are. The Quran is the truth, but God is now asking you, so what is there after the truth, if not error, except error? What is there again? So if the Quran is the truth, and I'm going to show you today why the Quran is the haq. If the Quran is al haq, what else do you need? Everything else you go to attach to the Quran becomes a falsehood. So Quran chapter 2 verse 42 clearly tells you, uh, وَلَا تَلْبِسُ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَقْتُمُ الْحَقُّ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ He says, do not conceal. Uh, وَلَا تَقْتُمُ الْحَقَّ بِالْبَاطِلِ Do not conceal, or what we, we can say, the, the word tak tumu comes from the word katama to conceal to hide something right to cover so do not conceal the truth you by what with falsehood while you 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 uh you cover the truth while you know to cover do not what conceal that is to mix up to cover Talibisu comes from the word libas, like a shirt, clothing. You are covering something. So you use the libas to cover. Wala talibisu al-haq bil So don't use the, the falsehood to cover the truth. Wa taktumu al-haq wa antum ta'lamu. And you cover the truth, that is conceal the truth or hide the truth while you know. This is Quran chapter 2 verse 42. So when I take you back to Quran chapter 10 verse 32, God is saying, and what is there after the truth, if not error? Then he says, فَأَنَّا تُسْرَفُونَ So how are you deviating or how are you diverting? Why will you divert yourself to the, to the error when there is the truth in front of you? As simple as it is, by logic, they are deprived of using reasoning. That is the, the, the mushriks, right? So we move on. When you go to chapter 10, verse 82, Quran chapter 10, verse 82, let's see what God says in that verse, right? Uh, let me let me share the screen. Right? Uh -huh. Yes, Salam Ishmael Adam. Yeah, you're welcome. So I take you to Quran chapter 10, verse 82. Now pay attention to what God has to tell us. So when it comes to the truth, God says, And God will enforce the truth with his words, not my words, not the words of Sahih Bukhari, not the words of your Sheikh, not the words of Zakir Naik, not the words of Mufti Menk, not the words of Prophet Muhammad, not the words of anybody but the words of God. And God will enforce the truth with his words. This is what you have to pay attention. The words of God is final. Nobody's words is needed. So God says, and even if the mujirimun, that is the criminals dislike it, even if they hate it, 
It must be the words of God to enforce the truth. Not the words of Baba Shu'ai, not the words of your scholar, not the words of the mushriks, not the words of Sahih Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. We don't need that. They are all garbages. Yes. Mm -hmm. So God will enforce the truth with his words. And this is what we have to pay attention. It's like the title said, it is, if it is not from God, then it is not part of Islam. Yeah, salam, sister Rosalind. You understand? If whatever we are doing in the Islam, the deen, if it is not from God, then it is not part of Al-Islam. Quran chapter 22 verse 78. God says, Huwa wa ma alaykum fi deen min haraj. He is the one who has chosen you and has not placed any difficulty upon you in the religion, in the deen. So whatever you are doing in your deen, right? and it is not coming from God, then it is not part of the deed. So put it to the garbage, the trash. Good. So now, we have seen in Quran chapter 10, verse 82, it is God who will enforce the truth with his own words, not my words, his words. And where can we find the words of God? We find it in the book, because it has been written down for us, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Good. Uh, Masbahu al-Islam. Salam. You're welcome. Yes, Fatima Chin, thank you. That is it. That's the fact. You see, good. So you mark down Quran chapter 10, verse 82, right? Good. Then I take you to Quran chapter 3, verse 60 to 62, right? Quran chapter 3, verse 60 to verse 62. And let's see what truth or which truth is God talking about? Is it the truth of Sahih Bukhari or is it the truth of the Quran? So let's investigate for ourselves, right? Like I said, to be an intelligent person, you need to be a person who likes to listen and then investigate, right? That is an intelligent person. So God says in Quran chapter 3, verse 68 to verse 62, He says, Al haqqu min rabbika fala takun min al mumtari. In chapter 2, verse 147, over there, it says, what? So it's a similar verse, but it's just the, an instance of the letters being changed. Right? So God says, the truth is from your Lord. So do not be among the doubters, or do not be of those who doubt. The truth is from your Lord. The truth is not from Sahih Bukhari. We don't find it there. You find garbage is there. The truth is not even from Muhammad himself. The truth is from God. <laughs> as simple as it is. Quran chapter 47 verse 2, Surah to Muhammad, gives the credence to what I just said. The truth comes from God. The truth is not coming from Muhammad himself. No. It's the truth coming from God. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So, Al-Hakku min Rabbika, fala takunna min al -muntari. The truth is from your Lord, so do not be of the doubters. Now, remember, this verse is talking to a second person pronoun, which was the prophet himself. Because he's the one who received the truth in the first place. Right? So God told him, the truth is from your Lord, so do not be among the doubters. Then God continues 61 by saying, Faman hajaka fihi. So whoever will argue with you concerning it, regarding it. Now the fihi is a masculine pronoun. The fi, he, you see the he attached to the fi, right? It's a masculine pronoun. So God says, so therefore, for man hajaka fihi, and whoever will argue with you concerning it, concerning what is the it? It is talking about the truth. You see the verse above? That is the context connected downwards. That's the siyak al kalam. It is connected. So al haq is a masculine noun. Truth, right? So the truth is from your Lord, so do not be of the doubters. Then the verse 61 connects to the verse 60. It says, and whoever will dispute or argue with you concerning it, concerning what is the it, the truth. So he wasn't giving two types of truth, <laughs> meaning you get the truth in uh, Quran and you get it in Sahih Bukhari. No, it doesn't exist. Uh -huh. You get it in the whole, the same book, Quran chapter 47, verse 2. Uh -huh. Right? 
ala muhammad wa huwa al haq huwa al haq you see a, mas a, a, a masculine pronoun in a singular form not in a plural form so in this verse fa man hajaka fihi min ba'di ma ja'aka min al ilm so and whoever will argue with you concerning it after what has come to you of the knowledge because the truth contains knowledge right the truth you have been given remember i said the truth is a factual information that can be verified or that has been verified that is what we call the truth so the truth this becomes knowledge because any fact you know in your head is called knowledge because you have facts in your head so you are aware meaning you have knowledge about that do you understand good so then god says if when whoever will argue with you concerning it after what has come to you of the knowledge then god says for cool then say ta'alu nadu abna ana come come let's call our fathers let's call our fathers out right uh, sorry uh, abna ana that is our sons let's call our sons right abna ana then he says and your sons abna akun then he says when he say ana that is our women women when he say akun that is your women wa anfusana right that is ourselves wa anfusakum and yourselves thumma nabtahil then we will what now you are going to call on god concerning the curses uh anyways let's continue <clears throat> so i was reading quran chapter 3 verse uh, 60 to verse 62 right that is surah al imran chapter of the family of amram right i was reading that those verses and then the kids distracted me <clears throat> Yeah, Israel Jeremy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mhm. Mm uh salam the boss Amadu. Salam Anyas Mufti. You're all welcome. Yes. Thank you for coming. Aha, uh -huh. so I was reading Quran chapter 3 verse 60 to verse 61 to verse 62 and then the kids uh interrupted me. So let me let me go back to that. Right? Uh, Masbahul Islam says, but Brother Shaib, this person follow another book with Quran. Uh, following another book, that is where the problem starts. Uh, believing in other things, right? That is where the issue of following starts coming. Because when you start to believe in something, you are making, you are initiating to start following that thing. You see, aha. Uh -huh. So unless in the frame of what God asks you to believe or follow, fine. Then if God says follow that, then you can follow. But if he doesn't say that, then no need for you to go and follow something which God hasn't given you authority to follow. So that is the caution there, right? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, good. So let's continue. Uh, salam, uh, Munir Udin. You're welcome. Okay, let's continue. So I was reading the verse, and then Quran chapter 3, verse 61 says, So whoever argues with you concerning it, that is the truth, after what has come to you of the knowledge, then say, Come, let us call our son, our children. Abna Anna, you can say your sons or your children, right? And your children, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves. Then he says, What? And let us invoke the curse that is supplicate and place the curse of god upon the liars so meaning among the two groups let's invoke the curse of god for the liars meaning which of the group is a liar right so i claim the quran is the truth 
And that is the truth. After it, there is nothing else. You claim, oh no, apart from the Quran, you have to follow Sahih Bukhari. Wallahi, if you don't follow uh, Sahih Hadith, Wallahi, you are not a Muslim. Really? So come. Let's have a dialogue. After that, let's invoke the curse of God and see who is the liar. Simple. Simple. Right? Uh -huh. Tell the scholars. Simple. That's what I want. Come. Let's do that. Then verse 62 continues by telling us, he says, Inna haza lahuwa al -kasasul haq. Indeed, this is the this 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 the Quran you are reading, the book. This is the narration of the truth. You see, so the, the book has been endowed with the truth, and it gives you the narration of what is the truth. So in the haza lahuwa al -kasasul haq. Then God says, Wamamin Ilahin illa la. Then he says, Wa inna laha lahuwa al azizul hakim. Indeed, this is the narration of the truth. And there is no God except the God, Allah. Then he says, For indeed, God is the what? Almighty, the wise. <clears throat> yes. So now let's continue. Uh -huh. So the emphasis of the verses I just read was to give place an emphasis of the truth, not having doubt. And then there is nothing else after the truth you have been told by God. You don't expect somebody else to come and tell you the truth. And remember the verses I just read, Quran chapter 3, verse 60 to 62, was a reference point to the prophet when he was even alive. And I can also use it too because he's talking to me as well. Because the prophet only followed the Quran. He never followed any other garbage out there. <laughs> you see, uh -huh, the mushriks will tell you otherwise. He never followed any other book except the Quran. Uh -huh, so let's continue. Uh, Salam, Ibrahim Babu Gida. You're welcome. So I take you to Quran chapter 34, verse 6, right? Quran chapter 34, verse 6. That is Surah Al Sabah. 34 verse 6 and i'm going to show you something interesting concerning the truth and how to realize that what the truth can do so god says mm -hmm. then he says you see what the verse says that is quran chapter 34 verse 6 chapter 34 verse 6 so god says and those who have been given the knowledge will see that what has been revealed to you muhammad from your lord is the what truth so god used the word who al haq so this huwa is a masculine pronoun used to reference the 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 the, 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 the book the quran the truth so it is the truth. God didn't say two things. He never said he gave the prophet two books or two things as the mushriks who claim that, oh, uh, I've been given the Quran and something similar to it. Are you nuts? <laughs> you call those garbage books similar to the Quran? Are you, are you okay? Who born you by mistake? <laughs> ah, mushrikanga. Eh? You are claiming the prophet was giving something, the Quran and something similar. Huh? Why are these people fooling like that? You let me catch you one-on-one -on, -one on a live dialogue. You come and prove this nonsense to the people. You see. So God says in Quran chapter 34 verse 6, وَيَرَ الْإِلْمَ لَزِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ and it guides to the path of the Almighty, the praiseworthy. So that is the Quran, the book, the truth. It guides. It guides. Do you understand? So when you have been given knowledge, huh? when you can study the book and know that this is the truth, it is enough to be guided. You don't need somebody else to guide you. You don't need anybody unless you are dumb and foolish like the other parties who are claiming 
that they cannot be guided as Sahih Bukhari guides them. But that's aren't garbage and nonsense to say. After God telling you in Quran chapter 2, verse 2, Zalika li kitabu la raiba fihi hudan lil muttaqin as a guidance for what those who are pious. And out of your foolishness and your naivety, you are claiming anybody who follows the Quran alone is astray. Are you nuts? What is wrong with your logic? Salam Abu Bakr Muhammad. Do you see? So Quran chapter 34 verse 6, those who have been given the knowledge will see, will see that what has been revealed to you, Muhammad, is the truth. And we have seen it. I've been given the knowledge. And I've studied the book. And I've seen it. And then what will happen next? And God says, وَيَعْدِي إِلَى سِرَاتٍ عَزِيزٍ حَمِيدٍ And the book, that same book, the truth, it will guide, uh, it guides to the path of the Almighty, the one, the praiseworthy. It will guide me. I don't need anybody else. I don't need nothing else. You'll be a fool to say you need any other garbage hadith to guide you. And tell you what? Sister Rosalind, the 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 al hikmah the wisdom is found in the verses of god itself quran chapter 17 verse 39 the inspiration of the wisdom is still in the verses of the of the quran check chapter 17 verse 22 and read up to verse 39 the wisdom can be found there quran chapter 33 verse 34 it can be found in the verses of god the wisdom is there it's not outside the quran you understand aha uh -huh. So let's move on. Uh, so now when you go to Quran chapter 5, 3. Now this is going to get very interesting, right? When you go to Quran chapter 5, verse 3. In that verse, chapter 5, verse 3. Yeah, Fatima changed that they want to make up their own truth with falsehood. Yes, it's true. They want to make up their own truth. Yeah, Muslim Jeff. Yes, as usual, this is what they will tell you. Hmm? Uh -huh. Okay, so Quran chapter 5, verse 3, in the middle of the verse, chapter 5, verse 3, Surah Al Ma'idah, in the middle of the verse, God is now making a statement. And He said, Remember, we can only get the truth from God. Nobody else. Quran chapter 10 verse 30, chapter 10 verse 32 says, For Mazabad al haq illa dalal. And what is there after the truth, if not error? So after the truth God has given us in the Quran, we don't need anything else because every other thing is error. We don't need it. They are all garbage. Put it to the trash. Do you get my point? Good. If you don't understand that every other thing is trash, uh, uh, apart from the guidance of God, everything other, uh, else is trash. Hmm? Go and bend the sea. Simple. Aliyama akmal tu lakum dinakum. This day or today, that is at the time of the prophet, God is telling the prophet. Because remember, he has a group with them. That's a believer. So God is now telling them. Aliyama akmal tu lakum dinakum. Because their deen is Islam. They are part of the deen. Remember, every prophet was given the deen. If you go to Quran chapter 42, verse 13 to verse 40, it tells you that it is the same deen God has given to all of them. But now God is completing the deen for Muhammad. It doesn't mean all the entire deen was completed at the time of Muhammad. No. Remember. So, So, so today I have completed. When we say uh, akmal, akmal, it means kamala, kamala or kamila to complete something, right? To bring something to to a uh, fulfillment. Aliyama akmal to lakum. Today I have completed for you dinakum, your religion. Then he says wa atmamtu alaykum nimati. When we say uh, uh, tamam. When we hear the Arabian say tamam, tamat, it means to complete something, to make something fulfilled, complete. So I have completed or fulfilled my favor upon you. Remember, when you read Fatiha, when you recite Fatiha, 
you are telling God, Ihidina Surat al Mustaqim. Then you said, Surat al Lazina an Amta alayhim. You told God to guide you to the street path, the path of those whom ye, He has what favored or put put His blessings upon. Right? So now He's telling you, Wa atmam tu alaykum nimati. And I have completed or fulfilled my what? My favors or blessing upon you. Then He says, Wa raditu lakum al Islam adina. And I have approved. Al Islam, that is the submission as a religion for you. So he has approved. That is chapter 5, verse 3. Muslim Jeff, chapter 5, verse 3. In the middle side of the verse, coming down, you see it, what I'm saying. Right? Uh -huh. So then God says, I have approved Al Islam as a religion for you. You see, Wanini. Uh -huh. So God has approved the religion, Islam as a religion, Al-Islam, the submission, right? Uh -huh. Has approved Islam as a what? The Ajia isauri ba yanzu zaki zo kina neman ban nan yi abu nan ga kake shigo nan Isauri Bara ba sio idu ba akwai wayan nan wurin kake Aha Ki kulle kofar nan bayan ki ki kafta kinji Kulle da kyau Yeah, now good. Aha, uh -huh. yes, yeah, sorry for the delay. So now we can see the religion was completed by God for us. Everything was completed. At the time of the Prophet, when God was telling him this, there was no Sahih Bukhari, there was no Sahih Muslim, there was no Jamia Tirmidhi. Sorry. 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 Kaki shugo na ngoko makinja i kaki shugo. Na ya. Uh -huh. So, at the time, there was nothing called Sahih Bukhari. There is nothing called Sahih Muslim. There is nothing of the garbage they are telling you. But God told him, Al lakum So when their religion was completed for them, there is nothing of Sahih Bukhari there. It doesn't exist. It was only the Quran, the book of God, and that is the truth. Right? Uh -huh. Now, when I take you to Quran chapter 6 verse 115, chapter 6 verse 115, remember, if the religion has to be complete, it must be completed through a book, right? So if it is complete, meaning the words of God is also complete, or the words of God are complete. Because if the word of God is not complete, the religion cannot be complete, because then word, words of God will keep coming to the prophet again. So it's not complete. I hope you are rocking with the, the logic I'm giving you here. God says he has completed the religion for you. Since the religion is completed, it takes words of God to make the religion complete because the words of God will keep coming to the prophet to make the religion complete. So meaning, if the religion is complete, meaning the words of God is also complete to the prophet. Nothing else is needed extra. Because when other things keep coming for the religion, we mean the religion is still not complete. It's just like a constructor telling you he has completed the house. The moment he says he has completed, he doesn't need to say except no. There's no exception. You understand? Good. So Quran chapter 6 verse 115. I'm going to share the screen and I tell you 
what God says concerning his own words. Yeah, salam, Nazir, NSC. Quran chapter 6, verse 115. God says, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ سِدِكًا وَأَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَهُوَ سَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ It says, The word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. There is no alteration to his words. And he is the hearing, the omniscient. Do you see what God says? وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدِقًا وَعَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَهُوَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ The word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. There. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدِقًا وَعَدْلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَهُوَ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Right? The word of your Lord is complete. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. It's complete in truth and justice. So since the words of God is complete, with meaning that is what makes the religion complete. If the words of God are not completed to the prophet, the religion cannot be complete because it will take the words of God to keep coming to the prophet. And remember, Quran chapter 10, verse 82, God says, And God will enforce the truth with his words, even if the criminals dislike it. So the words of God has to be completed to the prophet before the religion can be complete. So if that is the case, the religion is complete, the words of God is complete, why do we need any other garbage? <laughs> are you telling me the garbages they are telling you are the words of God? Wallahi, you'll be a fool to believe those are the words of God there in those garbage books. Because at the time God told the prophet the religion is complete, there was no Sahih Bukhari. There was no Sahih Muslim. There was no Jami at Tirmidhi. There was no Abu Dawood. There was no Sunan Ibn Nisa. Are you listening? They didn't exist. Salam, uh, staff. Staff 10, salam. Uh, Gabon, salam. Thank you, thank you, bro. Uh, Swale Abdurrahman, I'm, I'm working on that. I, I will try to get it on the App Store, but uh, you can inbox me. Inbox me. Uh, I, I will inbox you. No problem. Yes, Ibrahim Babangida, they can't reason. They, they don't reason. Uh -huh, because when you are in a sectarian religion, you are deprived of re reason mm -hmm. and logic. Right? So logic is thrown out of the equation for them. It doesn't exist. You understand? Uh huh. So God is telling the prophet, And ladies and gentlemen, let me caution you on this. Don't let the scholars keep telling you that when the Quran was revealed, there was no tashkil, there was no fat'ah, kastra, it's a lie. You just ask any scholar who tells you that, ask them a simple question. Who invented Arabic language? I tell you for a fact, no scholar, no scholar you know can prove that to you. Just ask them, who invented Arabic language? If they can show you who invented Arabic language, then they will be catching themselves. They will tell you when the Quran was revealed, there was no check. Are you nuts? If God is telling the prophet, the word of your Lord is complete in truth and justice. When it's complete and God says, there is no alteration. Tell me, if you put a tashkil, which is not there originally, what are you doing? Does he make it complete? Or uncompleted. What is wrong with these people? You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they keep saying that, Muslim Jeff. They will tell you the Quran alone is, you know, yeah. They try to give us name. They say Quran Yun, Quran. No problem. It's better to call me Quran Yun than to call me Hadith Yun. Am I a fool? I would rather call myself Quran Yun than to call myself Hadith Yun because your Hadith Yun is full of garbage. A book which tells you to marry a six-year-old girl. What kind of wisdom can come from such a book? Okay, let's move on. Now, the interesting part is, I'm going to quote Quran chapter 3 verse 78. Now, let me tell you some of the secrets of what the scholars usually do to you, that you don't pay attention. And this is why I'm exhorting people to study 
to reason, to ask questions, to verify. That's why I, I mention verses to you. I say things and I, I want you to hold me accountable for this. And if you are willing to hold me accountable, don't leave your scholars out. Start with your scholars. Good. So Quran chapter 3 verse 78. There is something interesting about this verse I want people to pay attention even though this verse is addressing to the children, uh, to people of the book. But remember, people of the Quran are also of the book because a book is given as well. <laughs> Ibrahim, Babangida, allow them. Allow them to call us crazy. No problem. Allow them. <laughs> Donald Trump. Donald Trump, one of the richest people on earth, is called crazy. So don't mind them. Allow people to call you crazy. It's, not, it's never a big thing. Quran chapter 3 verse 78. God says, وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيكًا يَلْؤُونَ أَلِسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابُ لِتَعْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابُ وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابُ وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَيَقَكُ زُونَا كَكُ زُونَا كُبَرِنِي كَكُ زُونَا أي كَكِ زُونَا شَنَا چَيَ بَرِنْ كَارِ كُجَيَ so this verse is telling us, and indeed among them is a group. When we say farikan, farikan is a group like farak to sect, like sectors. When we say uh, farak, farak is to divide something, to, to separate something, right? So farikan becomes a divided group, like a group. And we have it in the people of the book, even among Christians, among Jews, among all of them, among Muslims, we have the Mushriks, which is Sunnah, Shia, Ahmadiyya, Tariqah, they are there. Now, among all these groups you are seeing, God say, Lafarikan yaluuna, uh, yaluuna alisinatahum kitab. They would twist uh, the book with their tongues. They use their tongues to twist the book. Litasabuhu in order to make you think it is from the book. You see, Wamahua kitab. while it is not from the book, but how can you know it is not from the book? Because you haven't verified. You haven't verified. You, the one listening to that scholar, you think because he is he, he looks handsome, he has put his beard, he has his white jalbab, he has a sweet voice like Mufti Menk. So you think he's knowledgeable. Oh, you think, mashallah, he, he has prominence. So you don't verify, right? So now God says, well, it is not from the book because you haven't verified. Had you verified, you know it is not from the book, just like I've verified. So when your scholars are lying to you, that is why I can come out boldly and say they are liars. Because I've verified it and I have knowledge. If they say I don't have knowledge, let them step forward. They will say, oh, he doesn't know how to do tajweed. He doesn't know how to recite the Quran properly. Are you nuts? Am I here to do singing or reciting competition? Or am I here to put your garbages to the trash? <laughs> no, the difference. I'm not here to sweet talk you. Huh? The bitter truth is better than sugar-coated lies. So I'm not here to, to, to tell you oh, I know how to sing... Uh, uh, I know how to do tajweed, not tajweed, tajibush. I wonder why the scholars keep smoking so much. That's why they say tajweed. It's better to say tajibush. The point is, they hate the truth, so they have to have something to say against you. Oh, you don't know how to do, hey, Ahi, you didn't recite it well. He said, ha, ha. Why you say, ha? You say, ha. Are you working for American Idol uh, X Factor in order to correct people the way they have to sing? Oh my God. We are seriously trying to understand a message and you are telling me I have to have a, a, a Tajiwi. Uh, what? <coughs> Tajibush. <laughs> Madness. Allah <laughs> So God says in Quran chapter 3 verse 78, وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيكًا يَلْئُونَ لِسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ لِتَعْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ So these scholars will go to the magnitude, to the extent of telling you it is coming from God. And God says, 
while it is not coming from God. Wama huwa min in the law. Then God says, wa yakuluna ala Allahi le kaziba wa hum yalamun. And they say a lie about God while they know. Yes, they are speaking lies about God while they know. They know they are lying. But because you haven't fact-checked them, you haven't verified, you assume they are telling the truth. So you didn't verify. So when they tell you it is from the book, you believe. When they tell you it is from God, you believe. Ask them for proof. Zakir Naik just told you right now. Let me put the video again. What did Zakir Naik just tell you? Zakir Naik, of all people, he told you clearly that it is anything. Ask for proof. Any person, any scholar, sister, says anything, ask for proof. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 111, Qul hatu bunanakum, produce your proof in kuntum sadiqin, but if you're truthful. Any scholar, therefore what I say, that what Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. No value. What Allah says, carry weight. There you have it. You understand? Mm -hmm. What he Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. What God says, carry it. And any scholar says anything, ask for proof. They keep lying to you. Do you ask them for proof? No. You keep saying, Masha Allah. They keep saying, Allah Akbar. When a scholar is lying to you and you are doing, you are giving him funds. But when Baba Shwaib is trying to wake you up, you are here boldly asking questions. How many times do you pray? Do you do the five salat? How do you do your salat? What do you do? Oh, that you can ask me, right? Have you ever asked the scholars who are teaching you for how many years you've been practicing Islam? The fake Islam. Have you asked yourself whether it is the truth from the book? You never did. But when I'm trying to wake up your dead ass, you are here boldly trying to question me as if you are an FBI interrogator. <laughs> Masbawal Islam. Zakir Naik, I didn't play his video because I support him or neither because I, I follow what he's, uh, his teachings. No. The thing he just said makes sense. It's the truth. Somebody says something, you have to verify. I don't care what Zakir Naik follows. I know he follows Hadith. That is a mushrik as well, right? Uh -huh. But that's not what I'm here for. I'm here with the truth he just said. Any scholar says anything, ask for proof. Simple. Now imagine me asking about asking Zakir Naik for proof over something he said. He will be exploding again, upset. They don't like being questioned, but they like they want to ask questions. <laughs> I will get them. Don't worry. So Quran chapter three verse seventy eight exposes the traits of the main scholars. What the scholars are doing to you? They will lie about God and tell you something God said He never said. They will say it is from the book of God, it is not there. As, always ask them for proof to prove it. And you will see how your scholars have been lying to you. Wallahi. Wallahi. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yes, uh, Sister Rosalind Wilson. Yes. <laughs> Not everyone's ass is dead, please. Uh -huh. I'm only talking to the people who have the dead asses. Uh -huh. Good. Okay. Let's continue. Before I give the chance for the questions, uh, when, when I, we go to Quran chapter 42, verse 21, God says, Am lahum shuraka wa shara'u lahum min ad-din ma'lamu yazanu bi illa. Am lahum shuraka Shara'u lahu min ad-din ma'lam yazan billah. Quran chapter 42 verse 21, right? That is Surah Al-Shura. Quran chapter 42 verse 22. Okay, let me share the screen. Then we see the verse, what it says, right? Mm -hmm. Quran chapter 42 verse 21. It says, Am lahum shuraka'u shara'u lahum min ad-deen ma'lam ya'zanu bi illa. Or do they have idols? When you say shuraka'u, that is the, part, the, the kind of idols or associate you partner with God. That is the associate, idols we are talking about. 
So God says, do they have associates, that is idols, who legislate for them of a religion to which God has not authorized? Do they have such idols? Do they have? God is asking a question. Do they have such idols? Your Sahih Bukhari, your, 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 your so-called Imam, uh, Imam, Imam Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, Hanafi, these Imams you have put forth for yourself. Are they your idols? Who have to legislate for you in the deen to which god has not authorized they have the cap capability of making something haram and halal did god give them that permission did god give such authorization to them how to bring your proof if you are truthful bring it find me for a dialogue i i keep telling these people stop trying to inbox me with stupid messages and Let's arrange a dialogue. Call me like a matured person. My phone number is out there. If I'm scared, will I put my phone number out there? If you are, you people are claiming I'm running away, why don't you screenshot the messages, I, the replies I give you? Screenshot it and share it to the people so that they will see if, whether I'm running away from you. You go and lie to people. Oh, we call him for a debate. He's running away. Why will I run from you when my phone number is there? Ah. Oh my God. So God is asking a question. Do they have idols who legislate for them of a religion which God has not authorized or given permission? Do they have which God doesn't hasn't given any permission? So did God give your scholars permission to, to decide for you the judgment you have? So that's why I call you mushriks. Yes, mushriks. Because whatever you are doing, God didn't give authority. So when you go to Quran chapter 6, verse 114, see what God says concerning the judgment. Quran chapter 6, verse 114. And let me share the screen. God says, Afa gairi lahi abtagi hakaman wa huwa allazi anzala ilaykum al-kitaba mufassala wa allazina ataynahum al-kitaba ya'lamuna annahu munazzalu min rabbika bilhaq fala takunnanna midal mumtarin. So God is telling the Prophet to say, Shall I seek a judge other than God while he is the one who has revealed to you people ilaykum? This is a plural form. He has revealed to you the book explained in detail or elaborated, fully elaborated, that is elaborated in detail. Then God says, as for those who have, whom we have given the book, Yalamuna, they know that it is, they, it is that is the truth. Huh? What has been revealed to, from you, to you from your Lord is the truth. Then he says, So do not be of the doubters. So shall I seek a judge other than God? The answer is no. The religion belongs to God. The truth comes from God. Who else do I need? I don't need anybody. God is enough. So if we have to judge between ourselves, we have to use the judgment of God. We don't need any garbage. Do you see the point? Aha. Uh -huh. So again, when I take you to Quran chapter 5 verse 50, God says, Quran chapter 5, verse 15. God says, Afa hukum al jahiliyat. Huh? Jahiliyat yabugun. Is it the judgment of the ignorant or the ignorance they desire? Then God says, Woman ahsanu. Mean a lie hukuman. Likaumi yukinu. And who is better? Huh? Who is better? In judgment than God. For people who are certain. Who? Nadirakina kuwa. And who is better in judgment than God or Allah for people who are what? Certain. So for instance, for me, 
your garbage hadith can never be better than the book of God for me. Nadira. So God asked a simple question. Afa hukum al jahiliyat yabugun. Is it the judgment of ignorance they desire? Oh my God, these kids. Yeah, uh, yeah, Musa Shriver, I will come to your question. Let me finish. I will come to the question, right? Uh, so I will just put it, mark it. I will, I will attend to that later. Uh -huh. So let's continue. So Quran chapter 5, verse 50, it clearly says, Afa hukum al Is it that the judgment of ignorance they desire? Will you desire the judgment of ignorance? Right? So God says, Woman ahsanu min Allahi hukuman, they call me you kinun. And who is better than God in judgment for people who are certain? So if you are certain, you know the judgment of nobody can over override God's judgment. God's judgment is final. So just like as Quran chapter 6, verse 114 says, Afa kitaba mufassala. Uh, shall I seek other than God as a judge while he is the one who has revealed to you the book explained in detail? So I don't seek anybody else. God is sufficient as a guide and a judge. Right? Uh -huh. So again, I take you to Quran chapter 18 verse 26. And God says, mm -hmm. He does not associate anyone. He does not partner anyone in his judgment. Anyone. So when it comes to judgment of God, it is God alone. Don't partner him with somebody. The mushriks, they do partner Muhammad with God. And that is arrant nonsense. Right? They will quote Quran chapter 4 verse 65. What? So that means you are saying it means they are partners in judgment? So then what about us? Quran chapter 4 verse 58 says when we are judging among the people we should judge with justice you forgot that right Quran chapter 4 verse 58 it doesn't equate us with God it means we have to use the book of God Quran chapter 5 verse 44 Quran chapter 5 verse 45 Quran chapter 5 verse 47 wa man lam yaqum bima anzala Allah fa ulaika hum al kafiru hum fasikun hum zalimun Whoever does not judge by what God has revealed, he is a what? A disbeliever, an immoral person, a transgressor. So the judgment you have to do has to do with the book of God, as simple as ABC. That's what it means. Quran chapter 5 verse 48. Quran chapter 5 verse 49. Go and check. Prophet Muhammad was asked to use the book of God to judge the people. Simple. So God is the one who judges in the final instance because you are using his judgment to judge. Wallahi mushrikinga.
Aha. Uh -huh. So now when you go to Quran chapter 30, verse 35. Quran chapter 30, verse 35. God is now asking a question. He says, Am anzalna alayhim sultanan fa huwa lay yatakallamu bima kanu bihi yushirukun? God says, or oh, have we sent down to them an authority uh, for which uh, <clears throat> and it speaks yatakallam, meaning to speak and it speaks of what they are associating with him, with God as God sends down such an authority to you the mushriks can you prove it to us in kuntum swadikin Come and show us where God says he has given you the authority to follow Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, or any other garbage. Come and prove to us, please. You can't. You see, you can't. So Quran chapter 7 verse 33. To actually do that such a thing, it is haram. What did God say? So let me put the verse and then I share the screen. Then you see for yourself. Is it haram to partner something with God? Yes, it is haram. Is it haram to associate anything in the deen with God? Yes, it is haram. So Quran chapter 7 verse 33. Kul inna ma harrama rabbi al fawahisha ma zahara minha wa ma batana wal ithma wal bagiya bigayr al haq. Wa anta shirku billahi ma lam yunazzilu bihi sultanan. Wa anta kulu ala allahi ma la ta'lamun. All these things are classified as haram. So God says, my... Uh, my Lord only forbids the obscenities, what is apparent thereof and what is hidden. Well, ithma, that is a de and deliberate sin. Well, bagia al haq, that is oppression without what? Right. That is without the truth. Then he says, Wa antushiruku billahi malam yunazil bihi sultana. And to associate with God what he has not sent down any authority. That is also haram. And to say what you do not know about God, that is also haram. But what do we find ourselves today? Most of the scholars, they keep associating something which God hasn't authorized. Most of the people, they keep saying things about God when they don't know anything about God. Do you see how it works? It's just like speaking about me, Baba Shrine, the correctional officer, and you don't know about me. Of course, you'll be a liar. You understand? So we have to deal with the truth and nothing else but the truth. So what is there after the truth, if not hell? You see? So the final part, when I take you to Quran chapter 6, verse 113, let's see what the verse says. Quran chapter 6, verse 112 to 113. And I'll show you something interesting concerning that particular uh, verses I just mentioned. So Quran chapter 6, verse 112 to 113, right? And let's see what it says. <clears throat> that is Surah Tulim. Then we go to 112 to 113, right? Mm hmm Yes, Sharif, exactly. That's what they do. They confound it. So I share the screen and let's see what the verse says. Now, when you go to Quran chapter 6, verse 103, 12 to 113 right now i'm going to show you what god says in that verse so god says wakazalika he says wakazalika ja'alna li kulli nabiyin aduwan shayateen al insi wal jinn juhi baduhum ila badin zukhraf al qawl al gurura walaw sha rabbuka ma fa'aluh then he says, Fazarahum wama yaftarun. Then verse 113 says, Oh, let me take this off the screen because it's distracting the.
Yeah, it's distracting the verse. Okay. Then he says, Walitazga ilayhi afidatu lazina la yu minuna bil akhirat. Then he says, Waliyar dahu waliyaktarifu mahum muktarifun. Now, what is the verses telling us? What are the verses telling us? Now, what I want you to pay attention is what is what the enemies of Islam today are doing. That is the mushriks, the Sunnah, the Shia, the uh, Tariqa Tutijaniya, Ahmadiyya, Salafiya, Wahhabiya, Qadiriya, whatever dia dia dia. Huh? I'm going to tell you why they are the enemies of Islam. Pay attention. They are the ones who tell you the prophet married a CCSO girl. Some will say he consummated the marriage at nine years. And out of their stupidity, some of them will try to polish the say and say, no, he rather married her at nine years and consummated at 18. That's how they keep lying to us themselves. Let them keep on. They are confused. Now, <clears throat> yeah, no problem, Muslim Jeff. As I said, Quran chapter 6, verse 112. The verse is telling us, and thus have we made enemies for every prophet. So every prophet had enemies. Remember, Prophet Ibrahim. Prophet Ibrahim didn't give people any hadith to follow. Prophet Musa didn't give people any hadith to follow. Prophet Jesus never gave any people hadith to follow. How come you claim Muhammad gave people hadith to follow? Are you nuts? Okay, let's go back to the verse. Quran chapter 6 verse 112. And thus have we made enemies for every prophet. So every prophet had enemies. Devils of humans and genes. So these enemies are devils among humans and genes. Inspiring to each other the decoration of delusive speech or statements. Do you see? Just like the hadith. They inspire each other the decoration. The hadith books, they are decorated. They give them the titles, the Sahih, the Da'if, the Hassan, the Qudisi. They did all that. So then they, they decorate the delusive statement. Remember, Guru Ran means something which can delude you. Do you understand? Uh -huh, they will delude you. Now, it's to elude a person to do certain things which God hasn't commanded. So then God says, and if your Lord had willed, now God is talking to the prophet in this verse. Had your Lord willed, or if your Lord had willed, they will not have done it. That these people wouldn't have done it. But there's a reason why he made that happen. So now God is telling you and I, so leave them and what they fabricate. So you leave those people. They will lie about you, whether you like it or not, Muhammad. Now this is when Prophet Muhammad was even alive. And God is telling him what the people will do. This is what when he was alive. So now that he is dead, do you think these people will do the less? No. So let's continue. Quran chapter 6 verse 113. So that the minds of those who do not believe in the hereafter will incline to it. That is the trap there. So the trap is to let people who don't really, really believe in God in the last day will incline to it. Right? In order to approve it. Because they are the ones who approved such speech, uh, speech such statements. So he, they make it so he. So he means authentic. They approve it. Their own scholars approve it. Prophet Muhammad never approved any hadith for anybody to follow. Wallahi, let them face me and bring the proof. Where Prophet Muhammad approved an hadith and said, this is so he, follow it. They don't have it. He doesn't even know Imam Bukhari. He never met him. How can he approve something he has not uh, met or seen? So these people will approve it and to commit what they are committing. So if the Hadith tells them to kill somebody, they will do it. If the Quran says no. If the Quran should have said, let's marry CCSO girls, they will not do it. Because the Hadith says, go to some of the Islamic countries. They marry young ladies, young girls. When I say young girls, I'm not talking about 17, 18, 19. I'm actually talking about 12, 13. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. You see, so now this is what the mushriks, that's the criteria they fall in. They are the ones who are the enemies of the prophet. The ones who will tell you the prophet slept with about his 11 wives in one night. 
the ones who tell you the prophet's wife drank, drank his urine yes i have a scholar who actually preached among the people in ghana and he said the wife of the prophet drank his urine at night right so these people are deprived of reasoning what we call common sense they are deprived of it and people think they are scholars aha uh -huh. you see aha uh -huh. so to top it all the reason why you have to beware and not to obey such people from becoming mushriks when you obey them wallahi you also become mushriks even with the books that they have fabricated when you obey what they write in those books you become a mushrik somebody will say how so let me show you the example the same chapter chapter 6 verse 100 and chapter 6 verse 121 i'm going to show you something interesting in this verse right so let me share the screen let me share the screen to that verse quran chapter 6 verse 121 yes salam uh, brother khalifa abdul malik yes you're welcome i'll come back to your question soon quran chapter 6 verse 121 i'm going to show you why when you obey these devils and these mushriks you'll be a mushrik yourself i'm going to show you so quran chapter 6 verse 121 then i'll share the screen right let's see the verse yeah so quran chapter 6 verse 121 it says in that verse concerning what the devils are inspiring to each other wa inna shayatina la yuhuna ila awliyaihim ah li yujadilukum wa in atatu atatu tumuhum that is, if you should obey them, innakum la mushirikun. You see what the verse is, the part I'm reading. Wa inna shayatina la yuhuna ila awliyaihim li yujadilukum. Wa in atatumuhum innakum la mushirikun. Now, the interesting part of the verse I wanted you to see is God is saying, indeed, uh, it is he's telling you about that, that and indeed, the devils will inspire to their allies to argue with you. Remember, I quoted Quran chapter 6, verse 112 to 113. In that verse, it's telling you that every prophet had enemies among the devils, that is the genes and the humans who are the devils, devilish ones. And they inspire to each other the decoration of delusive speech or statement. Right? And God says, and leave them and what they fabricate. So leave them because they will approve such statement. Then chapter 6 verse 121 is now telling you, and indeed the devils will inspire to their allies. You know their allies already. You see? They will inspire to their allies to argue with you. They are, who are the allies? The human allies. The gene allies. They are all the devils, right? Among those, those groups, they are the devils. So they will inspire each other to argue with you. And God says, and if you obey them, remember where they are getting their inspiration from, from the devil and from the delusive speech they have, their statement. And this is why the hadith followers always they have to argue with you using hadith they can't use the quran to rebuttal they will only use hadith and tell you yes there is one narration the prophet says such people will come who will tell you to come and follow the quran always this is where they bring their proof from they cannot bring their proof from the quran because logic wouldn't support them so what they do is they will bring their evidence from the decorated speech which is delusive so god is now telling you and i if you obey them those devils you will indeed become mushriks and you obey what they are saying from their books 
their fabrications, their lies against the prophet, you will also become a Muslim. So you see what can make a person a Muslim. It's not only about putting a stone down to worship it. No. Do you see? Good. Good. Evidence. This is why you are not supposed to obey something which is not coming from God. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm done. So let me answer the last question, uh, a question which was asked here before I go. Uh, Musa Shaib says, please, Shaib, I want you to explain Quran chapter 17 verse 1. Why he says, Subhana lazi asra bi abdihi layla min al majjid al harami ila al majjid al aksa lazi barakna hawlahu nuriyahu min ayatina. When you say explain as to what the verse says or what exactly are you looking for okay if you are looking for it to be the the israel or miraj the scholars are telling you it's a lie it has nothing to do with any miraj miraj means the ladder climbing of a ladder and when we say israel is traveling by night so god is only telling us the prophet traveled huh traveled was was made to travel at night asra bi abdi layla min al masjid al harami from the Majid al-Haram ila al-Majid al-Aqsa and went to the farthest mosque. A farthest mosque doesn't mean the farthest mosque, the one they call in Israel. That is not Majid al-Aqsa. The Quran is talking in Quran chapter 17, verse 1. Pay attention, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So then it says, nuriyahu min ayatina, in order to show him the signs of God. That is why he was made to travel. If you read Quran chapter 17, verse 7, you get the answer as to which mosque was that right so you read from chapter 17 verse 1 read up to verse 7 you see the al-masjid which he was sent to see then the second question is is it true that the dead is questioned and punished in the grief no not in the grief when he's dead the soul goes back to god when the person is a bad person he goes to what we say that we put up uh, god put a partition between him and the earth that is the barzakh Quran chapter 23, verse 99 to 100. Quran chapter 23, verse 99 to 100. You see the evidence there. Yeah? Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So last but the least, uh, Khalifa Abdul Malik says, I've answered his, uh, I'm answering his question. Well, I think I've answered it because he's asking. So the basic question is, are hadith haram and why? Yes, they are haram. Because they are sayings which has been attributed to God and his prophet, which God hasn't given authority to. So according to Quran chapter 7 verse 33, to associate something with God which he has not given you authority, that thing is haram. Quran chapter 7 verse 33. So hadith books, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, they are all haram. That's why I call them garbages. Because they haven't been authorized by God. So they are haram. Simple. Somebody will say, oh, what if I find something which makes sense? You are a hypocrite. Simple. Because God says in Quran chapter 45, verse 6, tilka alayka bil haq, hadith ibad Allahi wa to you. So in which hadith after God and his verses will they believe? So you believe in some of the Sahih Bukhari. They will say, oh, when it makes sense with the Quran, I, why, does it, why do I need that? When the Quran is more better. Quran chapter 17 verse 9. The Quran guides you to that which is more appropriate. So if it is more appropriate, why do I need Quran to be in the level with Hadith before I believe something? No, I don't need that. That's why I call them garbages. Put them to the trash. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, I have to leave now. I have to go to the pharmacy to get something for, for the kid. I think they are not feeling, uh, one of them is not feeling you know, like well. So I have to go to the pharmacy. Uh... This is where I bring the topic to an end. And inshallah, we keep in touch again. I will have given the chance for question and answer to come in, but time is limited, unfortunately. Subhana Rabbi Izzat Amma Yisifun. Wassalamu ala al-Mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And we keep in touch next week. And ladies and gentlemen, keep out for the look. Huh? You watch the sky from tomorrow 
and uh, the next tomorrow from 27th, 28th, start looking at the sky when you see the waning crescent, the waning crescent. The Ramadan is coming to an end. Your Siyam is coming to an end. It marks the beginning and the end of your fasting. So Quran chapter 2, verse 189. So the, the crescents are there for your timings, uh, the timetables. So it marks the beginning of your fasting and the ending. So when you see the crescent uh, from tomorrow, 28, your, your siyam comes to an end. Then you have to end it. It is a timing for you. So ladies and gentlemen, this is where I end. And thank you all, uh, Sister Rosalind. Sharif Karim, Party Machine, thank you all for those who were able to participate and those who didn't participate. I know you watch later and we keep in touch, inshallah. Subhana Rabbi Izzat Amma Isifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Peace be upon you all.